Hello, this is Max. Humanity disappeared, and two sisters survive in an abandoned city, hiding from zombies. You can subscribe to the channel after watching. It helps us a lot in realizing the content. On the eve of a rare comet, Regina is one of the sisters, working at a movie theater. While playing an arcade game and beating high scores, she was annoyed to discover that someone named DMK had taken sixth place. Her boss, Mel, told her to get back to work, even though Regina disliked it because patrons would throw candies at her. Reluctantly, she returned to work. Inside the projector room, the projectionist, Larry, was on the phone discussing leasing a bootleg copy of a rare movie for $110. Regina entered and asked Larry if he knew who DMK was, but he replied negatively. Larry instructed the person on the phone to return the movie by 6 a.m. the next day and pick it up in an hour as part of their plan. He then told Regina to leave the back door open, promising her a share of the money. However, she worried they'd miss the comet sighting if they stayed at the theater all night. Larry suggested she watch it on TV and offered her $15 to spend the night and wait for the print elsewhere. Meanwhile, Regina's sister, Samantha, was watching TV at home when the phone rang. She answered and reported that their stepmother, Doris, had been busy with preparations for a comet party. Regina asked Samantha to tell Doris that she'd be in the observatory with her science class to watch the comet. However, Doris insisted that Regina should go home after work and watch the comet from there. After handing up, Samantha commented on Doris's affair with another man, leading to an argument. Doris slapped Samantha, who retaliated, but the stepmother punched her, knocking her onto the TV. Later, at the comet party, strange thunder and lightning illuminated the night sky, captivating everyone in attendance. Meanwhile, in the lecture room, Regina and Larry secluded themselves for fear of being caught. As the sky outside flashed red, they were unaware of the impending events. The following day, a red-tinted mist covered the sky, with dusty clouds littering the streets. Automatic sprinklers turned on as the city woke up without its residents in sight. In the projection booth, Regina woke up to find Larry in a panic about the film. She assured him they were just running late, but as Larry prepared to leave, he heard someone at the door. Assuming it was the person with the film, he was shocked to find a zombie instead. Larry got scared, the zombie hit him with a wrench and he passed out. Back at the theater, Regina was at the arcade machine, surpassing DMK's high score. She reached for some candy over the counter and propped a trash bin against the front theater door to hold it open. When she stepped outside, she noticed discarded clothes on the street and the red mist covering the sky, mistaking it for bad smog. Suddenly, the door closed, locking her out of the theater. She tried the alley's back door, but it was also locked. Then, she found Larry's motorcycle keys on the ground, along with a bloodied wrench. Regina headed toward Larry's bike but was startled by a noise and turned to find the same zombie that had killed Larry. She reacted quickly, striking the zombie and managing to get to the bike. After a brief encounter, Regina escaped on the motorcycle and explored the abandoned city, finding only discarded clothes everywhere. When she returned home and called out to Samantha and Doris, no one answered. Slowly making her way upstairs and calling for Samantha, she accidentally bumped into her sister, startling them both. Samantha initially believed it was a joke, but Regina forcibly showed her the evidence outside only clothes and dust remained. Samantha realized it was Saturday morning, yet there were no children playing outside. As they argued, they heard a live DJ on the radio, indicating that someone else might still be out there. They got into a car and headed to the radio station, but they discovered it was automated. Suddenly, a man named Hector appeared with a gun, instructing Samantha to step into the light. Regina realized that Hector had witnessed a similar situation with zombies, leading to the death of his companion. Hector's arrival made Regina sick, and she ran to the bathroom. Hector followed her, introduced himself, and suggested they stick together. Regina opened up about Samantha's hope of rescue by their father. Hector began to believe Samantha might be right. Meanwhile, Samantha started a broadcast at the DJ booth, asking if anyone else was out there and taking song requests. To her surprise, the phone rang. Meanwhile, Regina shared with Hector that she knew where automatic weapons were stored. Unexpectedly, Samantha barged in, letting them know that someone had called, and they all rushed back to the DJ booth. Hector picked up the phone, but there was no one on the other end. The two sisters began questioning Samantha about what the caller had said. 
but all she could remember was that they mentioned being in the desert at a research facility. As they argued, unknowingly, their conversation was broadcast over the radio, and a group of scientists listened in. The research personnel discussed bringing the survivors into their facility, but Audrey White, one of the scientists, opposed the idea. She argued that they didn't have enough data to make such decisions, but Dr. Carter, the leader of the group, decided otherwise. Back on the road, Samantha took a car for a ride and was surprised to see two cops behind her. She pulled over, only to discover that they were zombie cops. They grabbed her with their bloodied hands, trying to pull her out of the car. Samantha fought back fervently but woke up relieved that it had all been a bad dream. She went to the bathroom to freshen up, but was startled again, this time by a zombie cop. Terrified, she screamed as it grabbed her from behind. Samantha woke up screaming and terrified, and a panicked Hector rushed into the room, asking Regina if everything was fine. As she comforted her sister, later on, Hector told Regina that he needed to check on his family in San Diego. Regina shared that it had mostly been her and Samantha since their dad went off to fight in a war. Curious, Hector brought up Larry, the guy Regina had mentioned earlier. She clarified that they weren't in a serious relationship and pleaded with Hector not to go to San Diego. He insisted that he had to but promised to have dinner with her once he returned. The following day, Samantha used a car for target practice, but the gun jammed. She walked away frustrated, and Regina followed. Samantha asked if Regina had been with Hector the previous night, surprising her older sister. Regina asked if that's what had been bothering Samantha, and her younger sister replied that Regina always got all the attention from men. Realizing the silliness of their argument, the sisters laughed it off. In San Diego, Hector arrived home and heard music coming from the house, giving him hope. He rushed inside and called out to his mother, but there was no one home. He began collecting family mementos in a pillowcase but stopped when he heard something nearby. Alarmed, he pulled out his gun and heard growling from the front door. As he opened the door, he saw a zombie boy and warned that he was armed. The boy rushed in, and Hector hesitated to shoot but ultimately ran away, escaping through a window. Back at the research facility, Audrey records the infection rate and realizes she's losing memories. Dr. Carter enters and informs her about incoming survivors and asks when the blood test will be ready. He suggests that she goes to Los Angeles to conduct tests in the field, and she agrees, noting it aligns with the majority's preference. Seeing Audrey's disapproval, Dr. Carter questions her about her disagreement with the decisions. She responds by saying that bringing in survivors wasn't part of the original plan. As they reach the helipad, Audrey witnesses six children in the vicinity. Meanwhile, back in the city, Samantha asks her sister, Regina, for clean clothes due to developing rashes. Samantha also inquires about Regina's opinion on Hector, to which Regina replies that he's nice. Samantha then talks about her crush and best friend, but she quickly shifts the conversation to her rashes and the desire to go home and change. Regina suggests they visit a department store and try on different outfits, accessories, and makeup. Unbeknownst to them, they are being observed from a control room. A man monitors them through security cameras and instructs three armed men to act. Suddenly, the lights go out, and a voice over the speakers warns them that they'll have to pay for everything they've taken. Regina discreetly signals Samantha to get her gun, and Regina shoots the surveillance cameras. The voice orders his men to take her out, so Regina takes cover behind a column. Samantha distracts the men by throwing high heel shoes at them, buying Regina enough time to reposition. Samantha climbs to a higher level and attempts to drop a DV on the men, but misses. The men catch up to Samantha, grabbing her as a hostage to force Regina out. In response, Regina takes a hostage of her own. However, Willie, the leader of the group, tells her that he can't allow one of his people to be held hostage and shoots his own man. Back in the city, Audrey, Oscar, Dr. Wilson, and other scientists arrived in their helicopter and headed to the mole, checking all levels in the stockroom. Willie, the leader of the group that had held the sisters hostage, told them that a few days ago, they had been stock boys, but now they own the store. Samantha asked what they wanted, and Willie removed his sunglasses to reveal his decomposing face. He told her that in her worst nightmares, she wouldn't believe what they wanted, and announced they were playing a game called Scary Noises. Willie pointed a revolver at Samantha and pulled the trigger, but luckily, the chamber was empty. He warned that the next shot wouldn't be. However, Shots were fired, killing the stock boys. The scientists arrived in time to save the sisters. After examining Samantha's rash, 
they decided not to bring her to the facility. Audrey volunteered to stay behind with Samantha to wait for Hector. Audrey suggested they wait for Hector to return, and Regina was taken to the facility on a helicopter. Back in the stockroom, Audrey told Samantha she would give her something for her rash, and Samantha mentioned that she got them when she was nervous. Audrey injected her, and Samantha continued to ask questions. Suddenly, Audrey abruptly stopped talking, seemingly dozing off. Oscar believed Samantha was dead and asked if that was it. Audrey replied, asking if she should have just shot Samantha. Oscar, relieved that the girl's death was painless, suggested they go. Audrey told him that he was right about the condition progressing, but instead of weeks, they now had hours. She admitted that she didn't want to bring anyone else back to the facility. Hearing this, Oscar slowly reached for his weapon. Seeing his reaction, Audrey asked if he thought she was going to shoot him, making Oscar nervously laugh. However, she shot him anyway. Meanwhile, Hector, dressed in a Santa suit, headed back to the radio station. He called out to the sisters but was greeted by Audrey, who pointed a gun at him. She explained that she had written everything down on a pad to help him understand what was happening. Audrey readied a syringe to inject herself and disclosed that they had been taking in survivors, hoping to create a serum to reverse the effects of the comet. She added that in 36 hours, everyone would turn to dust, just before losing consciousness. At the research facility, Regina was questioned by Dr. Carter about her medical history. Growing suspicious, she demanded to know where her sister was. Dr. Wilson interrupted, asking Dr. Carter to step outside, and as he left, he callously informed Regina that her sister was dead. Regina, distraught, ransacked the room. Dr. Wilson returned to offer condolences but found Regina had also knocked him out. Outside the facility's gates, a car arrived, and the guard stood on alert. Hector befriended the guard by offering him a woman and then opened the trunk to reveal Samantha, pretending to be dead. Suddenly, Samantha opened her eyes, grabbed the guard, and Hector knocked him out. Meanwhile, inside the facility, Regina entered a dark room, found a flashlight, and discovered that she was in the blood harvesting room, which horrified her. Dr. Wilson entered the room and slapped her in retaliation for hitting him earlier. Hector planted explosives on the facility's vehicles while Samantha switched off the main power, causing life support systems to fail. Dr. Carter ordered Dr. Wilson to shut off the alarms and took over as Regina managed to escape again. She entered a room where the scientists were about to inject two kids, Sarah and Brian. Regina asked the kids what the scientists were doing to them, and the kids revealed they were about to be gassed to see Santa Claus, which disgusted Regina. A voice startled Regina from behind, causing her to shoot, but she missed, and it turned out to be Samantha, who Regina had thought was dead. The two sisters, along with the kids, reached an elevator that led outside. Hector picked them up in the car, and they drove away. Just outside the facility's gate, Hector stopped to taunt the doctors, who were within reach. Dr. Carter ordered everyone to get in their vehicles. Dr. Wilson sensed gasoline and grew suspicious. A zombie Dr. Carter turned the car key causing it to explode. As they watched the doctors burn, a zombie tried to attack Sarah, but Hector managed to save her. The following day, rain washed away the red mist and dust, returning the sky to blue. Days passed, and Regina and Hector took care of the kids. They formed a new family, taking pictures together. Samantha, feeling left out, waited on the other side of the street. After taking photos, the family waited at a traffic light to cross the road. Infuriated, Samantha asked why they were waiting, thinking they were insane since there was no one around to prove her point. She crossed against the light, but a car almost hit her. The car returned and the driver apologized to Samantha, telling her that she shouldn't cross the road at a red light. Samantha, smitten by the first man she had seen in a while, complimented his nice car. He mentioned having 23 cars and offered her a ride. Hector cautioned Samantha, expressing concerns about the stranger. Samantha asked for the man's name, and he introduced himself as Danny Mason Keener. Regina told Danny to bring her back by midnight. Samantha emphasized the burden of civilization resting upon them, and Danny agreed with a smile as they drove off. Danny's car had a license plate that spelled out DMK. If you are interested in such films, please proceed to the next video on the screen, and also share your thoughts about this film in the comments. Give us a like and subscribe. Goodbye.